started using just plain flour rather than strong flour. Um, hopefully you've got some yeast. I mean, this will work if you use strong flour as well. So I'm just gonna use plain flour to uh, make bread because I think plain flour is more common to have at home. But you will need yeast for this um, as well. To start off with, you need in your jug 290 mils of water. So I'm gonna weigh this out with spoons as well in case you don't have any measuring jugs at home. Again, just a normal dessert spoon. So I've measured my water and it is 31 um, tablespoons of water. So with this, it needs to be warm water, again, like a tepid bath, uh, not too hot or not too cold to help activate the yeast. So to my warm water, I've added a sachet of yeast, which is two heat teaspoons if you have a pot instead of a sachet of yeast. I'm also gonna add into here a teaspoon of sugar. You can use any sugar that you've got. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of sugar. This helps to feed the yeast. I'm then gonna give it a stir and I'm gonna leave this to activate for about five minutes. So whilst my yeast is activating, I'm gonna weigh my flour out into a bowl. Just make sure it's all combined and it'll go slightly milky like this and you'll see it start to bubble. Next step is to weigh out the flour into your mixing bowl. So I need 500 grams, which is a lot of tablespoons. I will count them and then I'll let you know, but I'm gonna go for heat tablespoons again like that. Okay, Okay. so I've me measured my 500 grams of flour, which was 30 tablespoons, 30 heat tablespoons of flour here. Again, I'm using plain flour for this recipe, as I think a lot of you might not have strong flour at home. If you have strong flour, this recipe also works with strong flour, or if you have 50-50, you can do that. You can use whole wheat flour, like plain, you can use strong bread flour, whole wheat flour, uh, strong whole wheat flour. You can use a mixture of flours if needs be to put them together. It will work with this recipe. But in here, I've just got plain flour just to show you can make bread with plain flour. A teaspoon of salt. So make sure you have a flat teaspoon. Pop your salt in and mix that in. You wanna make sure it's mixed in before you add your yeast straight on top because if you put yeast and salt straight together, it kills it straight away, it kills the yeast straight away. So give that a mix. You can see here that my yeast is nicely activating. You see it's broth and it's on the top. That means it's activating nicely. I'm just gonna leave that for a little bit longer. Okay, so now I've let my yeast activate, I'm then gonna add my water with my yeast and my sugar into my flour mixture. Now you wanna make a little well in the middle, so just pull your mixture to the side like this, so you have kind of like a hole in the middle. And then you're just gonna pour a little bit of liquid in at the time, so don't overfill it. I'm gonna put my bowl in to soak as it's easier for washing off afterwards. Then I'm gonna knead. So this is gonna take you probably about 15 to 20 minutes to knead this dough as it's plain flour. And the longer you knead it, the better. Again, I'm gonna put the heel of my hand into the dough and work it so I'm pushing it away from me. Some people fold it back on themselves, fold it back over. I like to get into a rhythm like this to knead it and this helps to stretch all the gluten in there to make a better bread in the air. About 15 minutes actually, um, I'm nearly out of breath. You can see that I have a smooth, lovely dough. A little bit of oil on my baking tray for this one, just a little bit, and then spread it over. And then you can either put some oiled cling film over the top, or you can put a tea towel over the top. I'm gonna put a tea towel because run out of clean film. I'm just gonna shape it into a nice ball like this. Nice round shape. You can do it in a loaf tin if you'd like instead, but I'm gonna do it like this because I like it a bit more rustic personally. But if you do want this to be a loaf tin for this um, loaf of bread, you can, or you can shape it, or you can do little ones as well. So I'm just gonna make a round one for this one. I'm gonna cover it with a tea towel and leave it to rise for an hour to uh, two hours. The reason we needed the plain flour for a lot longer than strong flour is because of the gluten in the bread. So we want to make sure that the bread is um, has more elasticity to it. So we needed to knead it for longer than if we just had strong white flour. 
So you can see how this looks now. We have a beautiful round doubled in size loaf. Okay, so now my loaf is doubled in size. I'm gonna put it in the oven, which I preheated to 180 Celsius, so help to warm up the process of the dough rising. And that's all I'm gonna do, and then hopefully I'll have a beautiful loaf. Okay, so my bread has been in the oven for 20 minutes. This is the one where I've just used plain flour and yeast. And you can hear it and it's hollow again, like you're knocking on a door and that means it's done. I meant to say before you put it in the oven, if you wanted to glaze it with some milk, you can do to make it a bit more golden. I didn't because it means more ingredients. And then here is your fresh loaf of bread.